Hey guys and thank you for watching this video. So in this video I will be upgrading this iMac 2008, early 2008, I'm not sure. So this is my mom's computer. As you can see it is all surrounded with all those things. And I'm gonna be upgrading this, the slow drive of this iMac to actually SSD. Because, well, I mean, I think it makes sense to me to upgrade to SSD because that's the only way to bring this, that computer to actually like revive this computer to be able to uh, revive it and use something modern there's not much, much options actually because if we talk operating system the El Capitan which was released in 2015 uh, if I'm not mistaken is the latest version that can run on this iMac so we don't have much options we can either upgrade uh, to the latest SSD drive and use the same operating system or we're we going to use actually the Windows I think Windows is a better option for this machine for those kind of machines from that era it makes sense to just use a Mac because like my mom didn't want to learn this new thing and she probably fine with whatever it works at now and Chrome actually runs fine on the older iMac I've actually cloned the drive from iMac to this SSD already using the Snow Leopard DVD, DVD disc right and it actually worked and I thought wow okay it works fine but then I just tried to boot and the boot didn't work so the boot process was locked some for some reason so I tried to clone using the El Capitan thumbnail drive and it also didn't work so I thought that I'm gonna just try to plug it inside and see if it works with SATA cables and just like if, if it works actually in the computer itself not with this uh, those plugs right I mean I think it should work hopefully fingers crossed but I don't know so let's see <laughs> I I think it's gonna work maybe in the worst case scenario I'm gonna reinstall the operating system I mean I'm gonna I'm gonna install it on top of the existing one on this hard drive so let's see if it works or not it should I think it should so let's go <laughs> you know that many tutorials mention the specific tools you need to remove the glass panel which I already actually removed here it is so here is the glass panel many tutorials mention that but at the same time you can only just I mean use the one <laughs> that provided with your GPS for example like this one so I just removed like that using my GPS suction cup so it's easy using just a simple tools to remove it you don't need to buy just stuff on the Amazon you don't really need that kind of thing and you just need to remove the glass panel and then you need to use screwdriver like that I'm not sure how it's called so I'm, I'm gonna just use this one and it seems to be working so I need to unscrew all those then I'm just gonna put it right on the table and remove the display and right there there should be a hard drive I'm pretty sure looking at the tutorials it seems like that and I've already upgraded uh, iMac from 2007 so I think it should work the same I mean not the same way but very very similar way so <laughs> all right oh but I forgot to mention that I first need to remove the memory uh, sticks out from there so you need to remove the memory stick door out from there and then you need to uh, pull the display anyway I'm gonna do it right now so this is the memory door we need to remove oh wait it should be a different screwdriver i remember i installed like five gigabytes of ram into this old computer so it should fly with ssd i hope it should fly actually in theory yeah guys i remember this removing that door yeah it has two modules one is one gb and another one is 4 gb 5 gb total then we're gonna remove the actual screws right there and see how it works wait which one which one which one this one probably this one yeah yep yeah, this one okay let's remove those so many of those you know i was actually puzzled how to remove the bezel and i think it seems to be like just right there it just it seems to push it like that shake it a bit so i'm gonna just try that it didn't seem easy actually to like remove the bezel because I need to disconnect the cables there and, and there so I need to be careful right now yeah now I'm getting access to the internals of the um, iMac so I need to just disconnect this cable right there and probably there should be another cable right there so I'm gonna see it I mean those older iMacs seems to be I mean those seems to be actually more upgradable than nowadays iMacs but still it seems it takes some time actually to be careful around here around the edges Okay, I removed this bezel, just disconnected the cable. Now I need to figure out, okay, it's all dusty here. Wow. I need to disconnect the display itself and just unplug it from here. Yeah, that's the only thing left and there will be hard drive somewhere around here.
Okay, now we can carefully lift the air up after I removed all the screws from the display here and here. So I guess this should work. Uh, yeah, all right, I'm gonna do it. Oops, you know, I forgot to remove those screws from here. Okay, so now I unplug those two converter cables that I connect to display. And now we expose the actual the hard drive and all the internals. Okay, I just need to leave this display up and it's all gonna be fine, I hope. And so much stuff in here. So much stuff inside here. Motherboard, display, CD-ROM, the hard drive. It's gonna be interesting. And all dusty because it was like not open in like 12 years wow you know i just hope it's gonna work afterwards what i have done to it okay i'm gonna remove this i'm gonna lift it and install the ssd first i'm gonna remove the temperature center sensor here then i mean i hope nothing is broken here seems so complex all those things underneath such a small compartment Anyway, this is the uh, hard drive we're gonna replace. So it seems to be easy, just remove all those and I'm just unplug it and I remove the temperature, temperature sensor. But I mean, guys, it should not be so many steps anyway to upgrade your computer. I mean, so many steps just to, I don't know, change the hard drive. What's, uh, and now it's even more complicated. Okay, and maybe I should replace the DVD here. Uh, probably I'll leave it alone for now. But I think the best idea will be like put SSD here because this one is like nonsense right now. This one is, nonsense so what i'm going to do is to reattach this um chassis to the actually a new hard drive so like this one the new hard drive and uh, this one could be recycled i guess <laughs> after so many years it did a good job so which drive is it hitachi dexter made in china and has an apple logo right there it's like wow okay warranty void yeah probably it's void after 12 years i mean wow it's still functioning just fine. I mean, it can do the basic tasks. How we progressed in the computer world that I can basically use the computer which is 15 years old even and then still like get connected to the internet. I mean, that's crazy. <laughs> that's a good sign, I guess, but we'll see how it goes in the future. Obviously, my next step was install to this, uh, this drive-in adapter. Now I'm just gonna install this chassis and I'm gonna just plug it right here and we'll see how it works. All right, so I plug it all inside and so it should now be able to... I think it should be other side. Ugh, I need to reattach everything because it's the other side. Okay, now I think it should work fine because I attached the right side and it should connect. All right, so I plug all the stuff inside, so temperature sensors, I need to put those temperature sensor somewhere on top of here, but I think it doesn't matter on SSD drive, the temperature sensor, like, who cares, it's not gonna be a big deal, but here it is, it's like SSD drive, right there, right there. The only things you should be worried, guys, is all those small connectors like this one or those inverter cables, like here and here, and it should be four of those. And like one connector here and one here. I hope it's gonna work fine after I connect everything, I hope. All right, I even cleaned up the bits so there's no much dust here. At least like not visible. I mean, okay, maybe I'm gonna remove some more here and here, <laughs> but it looks better now. So I can assemble it back. Okay, and now the moment of truth. Let's see if it actually works or not. <laughs> okay, good sign. Something is powering up. Okay, display is powering up. Does it even load something? That's strange. What does it load? Oh, I see some indicator right there. It's a green light. Okay, it says nothing. Okay, maybe I need to boot from the CD and see if it actually says anything interesting. Okay, I'm trying this another time and this time maybe it should start. I mean, it's loading something from the hard drive. The fans are spinning, everything seems to be fine. Let's see if it actually loads anything or not. It always stucks it around here. I can try to reinstall the operating system and see if it overrides the home, uh, I mean, it overrides the system files but leaves the home partition alone. But I mean, uh, damn it, it's the same thing. Uh, ha, ha. 
And the first thing to do before actually removing, wiping everything, like rewriting the operating system, I try to like press a repair disk. Maybe it helps in some cases. In some cases it doesn't, but it's still, I mean, let's try. Anyway, maybe, maybe it gonna help in some way. I don't know. I'm gonna still, uh, I forgot to reattach the webcam and I'm gonna reattach the webcam and then I'm gonna plug it all again and like reattach all, all the screws. And yeah, probably what I'm gonna do is, um, I'm gonna reinstall the operating system if it doesn't work because everything else is copied so like home folder all the users should be there I don't get it why it doesn't work it's seriously because the boot the boot partition is there everything is there like why does it work this seems not to get resolved that easily i don't know why does it say like it's not readable seriously this old max are like full of mysteries well it took a while to reattach it all together and i'm just finishing up with the frame i need to attach the frame but i think guys is it worth it just upgrading this old imac I think it's not worth it. I think you just like should go just straight to the trash bin. It's not worth it. That's my conclusion. But if you want to play and just like disassemble an old iMac and try to put in SSD just for the experiment's sake, then maybe it's fine. Otherwise, it's just not worth it. 20 minutes later, I still cannot attach this back to the iMac because I don't know. So the only solution for me as of now and I was not able to attach these chases right here. Just to use another external drive, I have another SSD and install Snow Leopard from a CD here. And then once I install Snow Leopard, I'm gonna plug in USB drive because the USB drive is not bootable to actually install the operating system right on the SSD. I hope it's gonna work, but I mean, it's just so much time wasted on pointlessly. It's just like, it doesn't make sense at all. <laughs> So I've actually installed Snow Leopard on the external drive and then I updated Snow Leopard to 10.6.8 to be able to run in the installer of the El Capitan which is mounted right there. I've tried another utility disk maker X. I think this one I was able to create a bootable El Capitan disk. I hope I'm gonna install it finally but I'm not sure how I'll, I'll keep trying. Yes okay seems like the installer has lowered it which is good. So I've decided to use specific tool to actually clone the drive. Uh, it's the tool on my Windows machine. I plug the hard drive and I plug the SSD externally. I mean this is like crazy scheme I found. Anyway, I think I approached this task incorrectly and yeah, I mean, again, Windows helps me. <laughs> With so much customization and ability to clone drive just fine, it's so easy now. Guys, you know what I have done in the end? I basically decided that I copied the, all the info from the hard drive using another machine to a SSD. So basically this is, this is the another SSD I have. I just plugged it inside. I'm gonna reassemble and it's gonna work. I already checked with external uh, drive and it works fine. So the thing is that lesson learned, you first need, need to figure out some tool to actually do the, um, do the process of transferring the data from from one drive to another and then you should plug it not the other way around you should not just like reassemble and I'll do all that before you actually was able to get booting up system on external hard drive basically load it on an external hard drive make sure it works and then use it that's the thing okay fingers crossed i hope it's gonna work and thank you for watching and bye bye so yes it worked just fine i'm gonna install some antivirus software i guess and well i mean the speed is pretty fast I mean I love it much faster than it was before when it was like just a regular regular hard drive so yeah I like it and it's like which model is that it's uh yeah so it's early 2008 model 5 GB RAM and yeah <laughs> graphics card are quite slow by the modern standards and memory yes I mean I think officially it's not supported I think officially it's uh, 4 GB but I've installed 5 GB and I think it can go as high as 6 GB it's just like one Four, uh, and one um, two GB slot I think this is how it uh, works oh guys I also have Windows XP installed right here actually I forgot this on, on that separate partition yeah it's in Russian actually but I mean it just flies it flies actually it's all so fast probably everything is like outdated I need to update everything because it's like five years since the last time I started but it, it flies it actually flies I mean this is crazy <laughs> it's so fast